Well, good evening, everybody. Yes, I'm gonna practice while we, uh, while we talk about all this fun stuff. I'm, I'm kidding, I'm not gonna play on the practice pad. But good evening, everybody. Nice to, to see ya. Uh, I will say that anybody that wants to join in and give their two cents of whatever kind, please wait till like 10, 20 minutes later because of the fact that I wanna say my opinion. Why? Because that's my opinion. And one, I am not a guiding light. Hello, hello, hello. I am not a guiding light. Do not use me as a resource in order to go to your 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 pastors or whatever and say, Chris Garcia Drum said, should I get paid? And so I should get paid. Don't even use me as a reference. If you do, I'm gonna say you're a liar. What's up everybody? Love you all. I'm gonna try to get all this out before answering all these questions. So questions down here somewhere. Uh, what's up, Mark? What's up, everybody? Uh, Justin, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? All right. So, uh, no, I'm saying it now. You should get paid millions. Yes, I agree with that 100%. So again, disclaimer. Here is the disclaimer. Here is the disclaimer. And anybody that wants to join, you're more than welcome to on the phone call 15 minutes, 20 minutes after I'm done. Okay. So Gabe, what's everybody else? Um, so first and foremost, we need to define the titles. Okay, first and foremost, what is worship and church, right? So first of all, worship, hello everybody. I'm gonna stop saying hi for a second because I wanna get my thoughts out. So worship is what we do daily. It's our daily actions to, uh, in reverence to God. So that means anything and everything that we do is worship to God. So that right there is, thank you, it is a nice shirt, love Bucky's. One day they will sponsor me. So that first and foremost, is our duty. So even if we're a gardener, if we are a professional shopper, even if that's a thing, you can do that as worship to God. There's no such thing as genre of music that is worship. We as humans love to compartmentalize stuff. Where did I get the shirt? At Bucky's. You have to go to Bucky's gas station, plain, plain and simple. Anyways, so worship is what we do daily, our daily actions, right? So like I just said, you could be a gardener and you're still, do you do your own eyebrows? Okay, I'm done with you. First of all, muted, muted. Anyways, uh, worship is what we do daily. It's what we do unto God, right? So anything beyond that is gotta be compensated in some way. So we'll get to that in a second. Now the church, we should not romanticize the church, the pulpit, uh, all these spiritual aspects. Why? Because let's just face it. Us humans are the church. You are now muted for sure, Joseph. Anybody that follows Joseph, stop doing it. I'm kidding. He's a lovely human being. He's, he's a, a great drummer, obviously. But the church are the people. So anytime you step through the doors that are considered a church, that is, we can call that a enterprise of some kind, a business or a branding, a place where people gather. The church are you and I. So we are the church. What I mean by that is why would we ever think that just because you step through this, these doors that that's only where God is. That's only where we can actually worship. That's only where we stop any kind of these conversations to get financial compensation of whatever kind, right? So in this short talk, I will say that in the yes or no, and mind you, in this yes or no, there is a massive gray area of situations that we'll get to. Miss you too, Kyle. You're great. Um, and in that, we're going to talk about those situational things. However, in the yes and no, I think yes. I don't even care if you're a beginner, novice, advanced, professional. It doesn't matter. Okay, anybody that's talking about hairspray, I don't use hairspray. I mean, it's clear, but my beard looks fresh. So yeah, all of you need to stop. And anybody that says it again, muted. You're done. So back to the main point. Beginner to advance. All Everyone should be compensated. Now, depending on that compensation is a different story. So as an example, if you're a beginner and you're just learning and you're trying to give your time, right? And you're trying to learn and you're doing all these things, even if it was gas money, we're in, we're in, I'm not going to talk about Biden, by the way, as in like whether he's president or not. I'm just going to talk about daddy Biden's gas prices, right? Are expensive here in California it's six dollars plus if I'm going to play for free at a church right at least compensate gas that's like twelve dollars fifteen dollars 
to get to wherever I'm going and back, right? Let's just call it that. So again, if you're a beginner or it doesn't matter if you're novice, uh, I don't use beard oil, um, but thanks for asking. If you wanna send me some, uh, I'll give you my PO box where you, all, all the other gifts that people wanna send me go to. Um, anyways, so that or even breakfast, like if, if the church is compensating you with breakfast or giving you something, right? Giving you something for your time and considering, hey, thank you for taking your time to be with us. Because again, I'm going to get into as my experience. So do you mean at your own church or at a church you were invited to? Well, we're going we're gonna to dive into that. Here we are jumping off the deep or the uh, high dive into this water. Are we talking about drummers who attend a church full time? Again, all these questions ask in the question box and we'll get to that. Is there a difference between passion project? Again, all of these things ask in the question box thingy because I cannot keep up with all of you. Uh, throw me some gas. If Again, if you're a beginner that can hardly play four chords, but you want to serve, congratulations, I'm proud of you. If you want to be there to give up your time, I'm proud of you. But hey, we need something back because like time, not time is money, but again, this is a different story. So ultimately, God knows that we all live in this planet where you need financial compensation. And there's no difference between me playing at a, well, actually there is a big difference between like a, a bar gig or a church worship set. There's different responsibilities. I actually don't look at it as just a gig. We have very important responsibilities that we gotta do as drummers, right? We not only have to be on point, but we also have to know the tune. No, don't do that ever again, IG. Um, my point is, is that we have more responsibilities on the spiritual aspect, on the, on the mental aspect, learning all the songs, all that fun stuff, because that's just what it, the part is of a worship drummer or someone drumming at church, so to speak. This is all very important. This is all very vital. So now getting into compensation for me as my experience, okay? Uh, your income aside from drumming, assuming you have to, that's a great question. You might want to ask it in the question box. Appreciate you, Skylar. Um, and yes, it's the tears of my enemies, not should, it's a must, it's biblical. Christoph Keys, you are absolutely correct, it is biblical, we will get into that. And you can join the call later on, call, live, whatever this is called. In about 15 minutes, I wanna open it up for everyone else to give their opinions, to give what they believe as well. I mean, this is for all of us, we're all learning here, uh, and he's got scripture, so that's all that matters. And Christoph Keys is a great keyboard player. One day we're gonna play together, one of these times when he's not so busy playing everywhere else. I'm digressing and I apologize everybody. So here we go, back to task. Me and my own personal experience. I have a degree in music. I also have been playing for two decades plus. I also have professional experience a decade plus, okay? That's just my resume first. I also have, not only that, but like just certain like parameters, recordings, live album recordings, playing with certain professionals, playing with production companies, million dollar productions that, I mean, I'm not making millions of dollars, although I should. My point is, is that I've, play, I've been the drummer for million dollar productions, and if I screw up, it all goes away. My point is, is that I am compensated for that. So my hourly, just like a lawyer, just like a doctor, all the doctors are salary, that's a different story. But people's hourly, right? As different professions, whatever kind, my hourly should be anywhere in the range of 75 to 150 per hour. As a musician, we're not talking about church, we're not talking about anything else, we're talking about just musician, just based on experience and if you're uh, equivalenting it to what lawyers do per hour and all that stuff, okay? So that means if I were to just play on a Sunday morning, we're just talking about Sunday morning and like, let's say rehearsal, actual service, one service, we're talking about 7 a.m. to about 12 p.m., right? That's roughly about $500. I'm just adding a little for a little more for inflation, okay? I know how to do math, but like, again, I'm gonna have to do inflation here. So $500 for a Sunday morning alone. That's my hourly rate, so to speak, because I have the experience and like I just talked about grad, like, education, yada, yada. So with that, with that right there, that means if anything's below that hourly, I'm technically giving that as tithe or I'm giving of my service because again, that's just where my skill sets are. Now, let's just say I do the same thing for five hours and I'm not getting paid. That means I'm paying my tithe and more, 500 plus dollars because of gas, 
I'm going to have a breakfast. Clearly not from Chick-fil-A because they're closed on Sunday, but I'm going to give my time. I'm going to give my gas and I'm going to give food. All this is obviously in reverence to God, but we're not talking about that yet. We're just talking about my hourly rate as a drummer, right? So all this to say, I'm now paying 500 plus to play at a church, to serve at a church, right? However you want to, however you want to look at it. My point is, is that, does that make sense practically? Probably not. In fact, I'll even go further as time. We're going to talk about time. We're not talking about the church just yet. We're getting there. I promise. I like to talk a lot if you haven't noticed. And if you haven't seen Bucky's before, Bucky's incredible. So <clears throat> let's talk about time. If you work a regular job, whatever that is, I don't care what it is. You could be a professional musician. You can be a full-time gardener. You can be a full-time teacher. I don't care what the occupation is. Let's just talk about you put in 40 hours a week. <laughs> Thank you, Art. I think I have a beautiful voice too. <laughs> you and my mom only think so. So let's just talk about you having a regular job, okay? So your regular job requires you 20. We're not gonna talk about worship songs right now. We, we, this is a long topic we're gonna get into. So let's just require, jobs require 20 to 40 hours a week of work. Sometimes if you wanna go hard, 60 hours a week. Sometimes 80 hours a week. Depends on the occupation and depends on the, on the field. My point is, is that Yes, should we give our time and service and all these things because we have these gifts? Again, of course, but you absolutely would not work for a school for free. Now, again, I, I'm gonna say this right now, and mind you, this, this problem, or not even this, this, this topic, is so minuscule to what's actually going on. For example, uh, what happened today in Texas, horrible, no one, no one, no one, no one should obviously have to go through that. Parents, kids, all of that, horrible. So, and also, things going on in Europe, other big major things that are happening in this world and it's heartbreaking, right? But let's just talk about ad moderator to your life. But what I'm talking about is just in this topic, okay? We spend 40 hours a week, right? Um, what is it? What is a must biblical? Okay, we're gonna get to all that in a second, I promise. So if you're spending 40 hours a week and you have a family or you don't have a family, it, it doesn't matter. Whatever you wanna spend with your own time is your own time. Now, you're not gonna, you're not going to go and work your regular job for 40 hours a week and not get compensated, okay? I, like I mentioned earlier, have had 20 plus years of experience playing the drums. So that means you're not paying for just the time you're using me for, you're paying for the time that I invested into this instrument, okay? So let's just talk about, again, back to your regular job. If you're spending, 40 hours a week on your regular job, you have a family, let's talk about 10, 20, 30, 40 hours, hopefully, to become, you know, spend time with your family or do things with for yourself and for whatever, that's adding up. And then now you have, again, if we're just talking about Sunday morning alone, five, 10 hours that you're investing, even maybe 20 hours a month, that's a lot of time that not only you're just missing out on uh, time with your family or, or loved ones, but you're off obviously giving back to people. And again, all of these things are a lot of gray areas. There's a lot of gray areas, a lot of situations, but in my opinion, the answer is yes. Everyone should be compensated. Again, don't use me as a resource to go talk to your pastors and, and or whoever to say, I said so, so you're gonna get that, that, that money. Don't, don't use me as a, as a reference. However, definitely do your own research and reading and also understanding of what this whole compensation part of, like, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say ministry because your life is your ministry, right? You are the ministry of your own life. So where, what, it's all going to your heart, the heart, the matters of your heart. Even Jesus talks about this. So we're going to go into that right now. So if we, if we work a regular job and we are disgruntled or bitter or whatever, how are we actually living out our life of worship? We're not. If I'm a gardener, I'm gonna do everything unto God. So I'm gonna be the best gardener I can be to learn, to give back to others, to make sure that I do my job well, right? That is my, but again, in that, my testimony, my, my everything that I'm doing will then affect other people. Because again, my character, if I'm living by the fruits of the spirit, while I'm working this gardening job, guess what? People are going to be impacted. People are gonna be changed. Gardening to playing music is the same thing. It's a skill set all these different things. So again, if I'm on stage or not on stage or whatever, 
The point is, is that it's all a matter of the heart, right? So if you're not doing your part with a generous heart or a grateful heart or all these different things, I appreciate you guys. I'll answer as many of those. I'm sorry you have to go. Uh, we'll get to the scriptures, Tiny. My point is, is that if you're not doing it with the heart of gratitude and giving and all these different things, then again, it goes back to that. Because again, Jesus talks about like how your, your um, what's the word? I probably should read the scriptures. I mean, no one really reads because like I showed you guys earlier, I put the title of the song title on the screen and no one reads that, right? So I'm, I'm highly doubt any of us reads the scriptures. But if we did, uh, Jesus says like, you know, it, it's, what's the word? It's all a matter of the heart, a matter of your words. Again, you can say and do all the things with your words and look like you're, but if your heart's not there, you're not really actually doing it for the right reasons. So again, back to the the topic at hand, should we get paid or should we get compensated in some way as musicians on stage? I think absolutely. And again, everybody's going to be different with their own opinions, right? Because because of the fact that, um, and I don't charge, so feel free to DM me to play drums and worship team. Just kidding. I agree with you. Um, <clears throat> you better read them scriptures with that. <laughs> We're going to read the scriptures. I promise. We'll get all of that. Uh, actually, Christoph, if you can uh, send an invite in like five, four more minutes, four more minutes, I want you to, to talk because you seem to be uh, a leader in this. Um, but And anybody else that wants to join in. My point is in all of this, though, is that the gray areas are like, let's say, for example, a church doesn't have the money. By the way, most, ch most churches probably do have money. Not that you're, they're a gold mine, but again, tithing which is a whole other topic, by the way, because I'd rather tithe to the people, like we just talked about, the church is the people. Uh, <laughs> just stick to the facts, you're right. So if we're going to tithe, we're tithing to people. So I would much rather give my money to someone in need. As an example, if a friend can't pay rent or pay lights or uh, a friend needs to buy something specific. As an example, I'm, I shouldn't say this, but someone was talking about they're going to take, they just graduated, they're gonna go take a test to become a school teacher. Hello, and, and it's $50 to take this test. I'm like, well, you know what? I'm going to give this person, not only did they trim my beard, but I'm gonna give them an extra $50 so that they can just pay for this test so they don't have to worry about it. Why? Because that's me tithing to the church, whether they're a believer or not. My goal is to love my neighbor as myself, right? So if we do that and we're giving of without trying to receive anything back, that's a tithe in itself. We can give it to a specific building or a specific branch of the church because that's a building however the overarch of the global church which is all of us humans and that's what we need to be understanding of is that we're here for one another we have to give to one another and we shouldn't take advantage of each other why should us worship musicians get paid if salvation is free for us why would she get paid for talents but were god given us answer me that great question you know what i will answer that um because of the fact that Worship is what we do daily. So you wouldn't get paid to do it. Uh, you would take payment for everything else that you do in life. But when it comes to church, we think that's God knows we need payments. God gave us salvation for free, of course. But at the same time, he also knows that we live in the world that he created and also allows for money to be such a taboo topic, if you want to call it, or such a, a reason for this kind of a uh, place that we should say, no, 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 I, I want to give up all my time. As an example, if you want to do, uh, we're not doing those requests just yet, but if you want to, as an example, uh, give up your time, no problem. If you want to give of yourself and your, your resources, by all means, that's your sacrifice, that's your tithe, that's your worship, more power to you. However, the truth is, though, is that we have a skill that most people don't obtain. As an example, if you go to a church service and they don't have a band playing, you're going to notice that right away. Do you need, by the way, you don't need musicians or a band at a church to play, first of all. That's a, a construct that we as humans have made. We want worship music. We don't need it to have a church service. You can have a church service on a lawn with everybody talking about who God is and understanding scripture. That's because that's what was been given to us. We, the money, love of money, no, no. Love, the love of money is the root of all evil. Not just money, by the way. 
uh, that's a great input, but the love of money, because again, it goes back to the heart posture. It's the greed. It's what we do because of money. So again, should I move to churches because I can grow more musically and get paid more? That's a lot. That's, those are, uh, that's a, that's a great question. And again, let's all be respectful to one another, uh, whether the scriptures are quoted correctly or not. Uh, the love of money uh, again. So if I'm going to be compensated for all the work that I've done to become a musician of whatever kind, you're again, you're going to notice if the band is not there, right? So if you're going to notice that the band's not there, then you obviously need to hire musicians or uh, especially if your, your church doesn't have it. So like some churches don't have some churches do not have the resources. Let's say as an example, some churches don't have a drummer, bass player, whatever. I don't expect for my church, but when I get requested, again, you don't have to expect, I'm gonna go, well, let me finish this topic first, this subject first. Some churches need to outsource. If that church, we're gonna talk actually about the churches itself. The church itself does not need musicians or a band to have a worship service because worship again is what we do daily. We can have food together, we can talk about scriptures, we can actually glorify God without ever playing an instrument. That is the fact. So the church, the church itself chooses to want musicians. And if they don't have musicians in house, then you have to outsource. And again, if I, me myself personally, uh, I, if I'm gonna be asked to go play at a church, hey, I'm sorry, I could, I'm, like I mentioned earlier, if $500 is my hourly rate, so to speak, or sorry, for those five hours, then I'm sorry, you have to compensate me for that. I can also not do that because of the fact that I want to be able to help and serve. And I know everybody is, is different in their, in their compensation realms and what they're able to do. But again, that goes back to tithing. Tithing is for the storehouse, for the church to keep the lights on, to pay people and their salaries on at churches, to give to people who are needing to work, whatever the, whatever the story is, it doesn't matter. So it, it, there should be no stinginess because again, if God has given us all things and we're gonna bless the church, which is the people, the people should be compensated for whatever they do. Pastors should be compensated because they take their time to sacrifice, which is fine. That's what we're supposed to do. But in this world, we need financial compensation regardless. So pastors go to school for studying, you would hope. Uh, they also have honed in on their skills on how to present the, the scriptures or Bible to people so that they can understand, have a good feedback, fill in the blank, right? So if they're able to get paid, you also should pay a financial advisor because I mean, if you're making money as a church, you need that because again, there's laws in America specifically that you have to kind of have these things under wraps. Um, again, there's people on staff for a reason. And again, if you're a volunteer because you wanna give of your time, more power to you. I'm not saying you shouldn't do those things. These are all beautiful things because again, that's your act of worship. As an example, when Paul talks about if you're, if you're gonna stumble because you ate you know, meat or if your neighbor does that, all that fun stuff, don't do it. It's pretty simple. Like if, you're gonna, if it's gonna cause you to sin or whatever have you, don't do those things. So this is the same kind of concept when Paul is talking about that. Because again, if you're able to give of your time and you want to give of your time and you're, it's going to bless you as well as it bless others, do it. No one's stopping you. No one's saying that you shouldn't. It's a very good mindset or heart to have or posture. But at the end of the day, too, you shouldn't be upset that other people are doing or wanting compensation for their time. Because, again, a lot of places, as an example, let's say you have a rehearsal on Tuesday night or Wednesday night. That's three hours, right? And then you have driving time. Let's just add an hour to that. So now you have four hours during the week of rehearsals. And then Sunday morning, you're there for five, eight hours. No, not, that's way too much. Let's do, let's do six hours. So now I said four. So now you're 10 hours a week giving to a church for whatever reason. If you wanna do that, more power to you. If you have an extra 40 hours a month to give, by all means, do it. But a lot of times I don't have 40 hours to give, let alone five hours to give to a specific thing. And that's pretty difficult. And again, is it work? Yes, it is work. Because if you're putting in time to practice, you have to learn the music before you even get to rehearsal. Because by the way, everybody, rehearsal is the performance. I'm, not, I'm gonna tell you this as a musician, it's, the performance is not the performance. The rehearsal is the performance. You should be super locked in at rehearsal and rehearsal is just to fine tune anything else that you wanna do for that service. This is, must be said, do not get to rehearsal and expect to learn the songs then. 
Trust me. Anyways, uh, very easy work uh, or job should be paid. It's get people to volunteer. Um, yeah, people should be uh, also, <laughs> your beer is on point. Thanks, Nate, I miss you. Uh, I wish I could say, but gotta go. Okay, love you all. Man, this is a lot. I'm currently just starting worship arts internship at my church. I will be a worship leader. What do you say to those who want to pay musicians, but the pastor says we shouldn't? If the pastor, here, I'm gonna say this. This is a great topic before I get to all this other stuff. If the pastor wants musicians for a worship service and you do not have the musicians, you're at, in a bind. Either A, you don't hire musicians and you don't have musicians, or B, you hire musicians. It's really simple. And if the pastor does not want to do this, that does not make any logical sense because of the fact that you can A, not have musicians. You can still have a service. You can still have church wherever without musicians. It's fine. But if that's what you want, if you're choosing to have musicians, then you need to pay them, unfortunately, because again, not I'm not going to have my home church at 18 different churches. That doesn't make any sense. I cannot do that. It's not physically possible either. So you need to understand that it's okay to compensate people for their time. It's okay to compensate people for what they want to do. Um, it's a very difficult task, but really it's simple because money should not be the focus. If you want people to do certain things and work for your ministry or your church or whatever you want to call it, you gotta, you have to pay, unfortunately. Um, or fortunately, it depends on who you are. Um, I will say though that um, it's not only about like how much money someone can make. Again, I'll just say, for example, working at Influence and actually the Father's House. I love them both. I consider them both homes to me because like there's different reasons for it. And Influence has given me you know, more than I could ever ask for. So will I do a service for free? Absolutely. I'm gonna do those things for free because of the fact that they've already blessed me so much in other ways and I've also blessed them. So it's a reciprocal thing because that's family, right? Same thing with like the Father's House, which is crazy by the way. They have like 30 volunteers on a Sunday morning, which is beautiful and also unseen uh, in other churches. I'm just saying in general, that it's crazy that they do that. But people are so passionate about being there and to give of their time and service and because they want to see that house grow, which is beautiful because why? We're there for each other as humans because we are the church. So it's a beautiful reciprocation of things. Now, again, people, I know a lot of people that are super professional that actually give of their time more than they should. That's their act of worship. That's their blessing to the church. But again, we're talking about should musicians be paid, yes or no? And I absolutely think yes. Uh, ask, do you honestly, honestly worship to glorify God or is it because of the paycheck? If you weren't getting paid uh, for it, would you would you do it? Um, re this is what I said at the beginning. I'm gonna say this again. Our worship is our daily actions. So our daily actions, whether they're paid or not, at a regular job, at a worship to God, it doesn't matter. Our daily actions is and our worship to God. So if you're doing it for the money, that's the heart problem that we talked about earlier too. Whether you're doing it for money, the love of money, which is not good because that's the root of all evil. But the point is, is that I, whether I'm doing it for a paycheck or not, the point is, is that you're worshiping God through all things. Sometimes worship looks like practicing. And I, you know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about all of you. We all need to practice. So worship is practice. Two hours, five hours a day because we're giving back to God, the talent that he gave us, we're working on it, we're honing on it. That's our act of worship. Remember, it's not a genre, it's not anything else. So if I'm gonna get paid to play at a bar gig, and again, by the way, that's an act of worship too, because while I'm there, I'm loving my neighbor as myself. I'm doing those things to be a light to other people, because you don't, remember, like you, you gotta go to the places where the people are to love them. That's, that's your job, that's our responsibility. Worship, music, at a church, it's a different responsibility. So a paycheck, regardless, you're gonna get paid in, in one way or another, right? But at the same time, if you're, if you're worshiping God in all things, it shouldn't matter if it's on the pulpit or not. Hello to everybody else. All right, let me, let me get to these questions. Okay, are we talking about musicians who attend a church regularly? We're going to talk about this question. Uh, you can receive questions when badges are on, but you can't show them on screen. I don't know what that means, IG. So is that is that showing? Is that showing? Oh, my gosh. 
Not that we have to get paid ultimately, it's all for the glory of the Lord, but still should get paid for the time and money and for everything is to the glory of God. In fact, I should never have to say to God, I'll be the glory. Why? Because he doesn't really need that from us. He already knows that he's all knowing like, but should we do it? Yeah. Humans love to see that and hear that, by the way, that's a different story. That's a different concept. But my point is, is that if your life is an act of worship, it doesn't need to be said for everyone else. That should just be your act of worship. Because again, anything from your lips can be far off the point. You can be saying the right things, but your heart is so far away. And that's why like uh, Jesus talked about like, you know, whitewashed tombs and all those different things. And like in the Bible somewhere, I mean, and you guys have to read that, right? Like We've all had to have read that once in our lifetime. So this question was, are we talking about musicians who attend a church regularly? If you attend this church, okay, I'm going to answer this question. If you attend, let's just say, if you attend a church and you want to give of your time, that is more power to you. That is beautiful. That is great. But again, if that's your home church, you can decide whether, and this goes back and falls back on us as the musician and the human. We can decide if we play for free or compensation. Whether it's $10 or they pour into you, it doesn't matter. You should be paid for your time and your compensation for what you put into the service. Again, you're more noticed if you're not playing as a band than you are, right? It's just facts. So either you're going to use tracks or you want people to play. If you want to be a part of the service and you want to give of your time, more power to you. But even if you attend that church and it's your home body or whatever, I absolutely think you should be compensated. Why? Because you, again, have a skill set that not everyone can do. If there's 100 people and only one person's a drummer, the odds are in your favor. Do, 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 do. Like that's, it's, it's just facts. And again, you're not trying to abuse a church by taking all their money. That's not the point. They do have money. And again, it's, if it's for gas, if it's to help you with groceries for the week, whatever, that's beautiful. That's what the church is for. That's what tithing is for. A lot of those things, a lot, a lot of things go into this. Pastors should perhaps allocate funds for professionals. Couldn't agree more. Uh, pastors out of order. I don't know what that was from, but yes, that, whoever that pastor was, out of order. What about a church you attend full time? Same question. I answered that twice. Now, do you think a vocalist worship leader should also get paid? Look it. A vocalist is a musician, so this falls into that. Yes, a vocalist should get paid. Any musician should get paid because they're attending and or helping and or giving to the church. If they want to do that as an act of offering, more power to you. But it is quite all right. And we musicians should get paid because, again, you notice when they're not there, then you are. The word says don't jump around houses either. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of things the Bible say. I'm going to invite this guy, uh, Elijah, to join. And then I'm going to say, what was this other one? um yo what's up brother what's up man how you doing good and you chris what's up bro i'm doing well so i want you to uh tell us your your opinion on this topic do you think you should be a certain age wait before, <laughs> you, tell me your before you tell me that tell everybody who you are and why you are and who you, who you think you are um yo what's up everybody my name is elijah i am a worship drummer drumming with brave miami uh, i've been playing drums since i was three and yeah, just just kept that, just kept that going, just just kept that train going. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, just following up on that question, should musicians get paid for performing at church? Honestly, literally, when I first saw this on your story, I went around my whole family, like the whole house. I asked my mom and my dad, and they're not even musicians, but they gave like these really really good answers that I'm like, wow. Okay. Um, Let's hear. But it. honestly. I, there's there's a lot of yes and no's like, but m my most like answer would probably be no because like, why? Just like because like, already like performing on stage is already a gift. You know what I'm saying? Performing on stage is is already a gift. It's a privilege. You know what I'm saying? Like we have this gift to draw people closer to God. Like literally that that right there is a day one job that that's like a dream like i i could be on i could be on the drum set 24 7 right now and care less about getting paid like why would i want to get paid for having free will to to express my my talent my my gift my feelings to god you know what i'm saying like like, like i said we all have a gift 
we have a we have an amazing gift that we get to like show out every day live streaming on you know what I'm saying it could be on live you know what I'm saying it could be anywhere like that right there is a gift like that right there is an automatic gift like so I really don't think it it's necessary and like if I was to say yes it would probably be like if we were on tour if we were like touring or if we were to like drop like an album or like a concert then yeah I, I guess we could get paid because you know it's a concert you know what I'm saying there's a lot of people coming out you know so like there's a lot of there, there's a lot of yes and no's like a lot of yes and no answers I, I hear you completely and I love that the heart behind it again the it's all it all goes back to the heart of things but let's look at the practicality okay I, I'm just talking about practicality because we don't want to romanticize the scriptures and we won't sorry want to romanticize the church either and i say that with all respect because again we all we love it and that's what we live for because we are the church so uh, i'm not sure if you're freezing or if it's my connection probably me it's always my fault um but the point is is that in the practicality yes god will care for you give a, like he takes care of the sparrows all these things but in the practicality are we able to even pay bills later on oh he must have, it must have dropped out because of whatever um, connection. But um, thank you for your input. Appreciate it, Elijah. My point is, is that, yes, you can do all that for the heart. Uh, send requests, request, request. yeah. Uh, go live with him. So the practicality of it all is that, like someone even pointed, how are you going to eat? How, how, how are you going to even live in this planet? Oh, okay. And again, you're fine. I love the hair. Uh, and why aren't you guys asking him oh, what he uses for hairspray or, or shampoo? These are all on the internet. No. The point, my point Yo, is... Man, stop. <laughs> nice, nice. Stop so my point is, is that they're all great points for sure. But when you really break it down, God, God already knows our needs. So if he's going to take care of the sparrow... Why wouldn't he take care of the sparrow through the church, which is what it's designed for? We're supposed to be for each other. We're supposed to give to one another. We're supposed to help one another out. And again, our, we do have a gift. It is an honor. It's a privilege, all these different things. But in that, we also still you need compensation for that. For, as an example, uh, I even when I was – and someone asked earlier, so I'm going to answer that. Should a 15-year-old play in church, get money, whatever – I have been playing in the church since I was 15 and they would compensate me with meals, right? They would say, here's pizza or here's uh, a home cooked meal from a Filipino right. family or, or, you know, whatever it was, but that's compensation. And whether it's actual money or not, they're doing something for me because I've done something for everyone else. Right? So again, it doesn't have to be an actual financial thing in which we are given. However, that is where the reciprocal, I can't even say that. The transaction is where I'm going to take care of you, you take care of me, not because like we need it, but that's just part of the sparrow being fed. Like how, how else am I going to be fed? Am I going to go starving or I have to like, again, shell out my own money as a 15 year old, which I didn't have to like even, you know, be there for many hours to help with the youth group or whatever it was to not get compensation, right? So again, I, great points. Uh, I love the heart behind it, but practicality wise later on, I mean, that's the same thing with like, you know, promoters saying, oh, we'll pay you in the, like, in, um, what's the word? Uh, and not endorsements. What's the, oh my goodness, exposure. We're going to pay you in exposure, right? That's the same kind of concept, whether you're using it for God or for a, uh, you know, band of whatever kind, right? Those kind of concepts. God knows what your needs are. So why wouldn't he give financially or resources or whatever for your time and your talents? I see you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I want to, like, go back onto what you said about the 15-year-old. Yeah. Like, you guys, like, okay, it's like, to all those young musicians out there, like, take this from me. Like, I have been, I started playing drums, like, at the age of three. I, I, I didn't, like, start playing with the church, like, around, well, like, six or, like, eight. But that doesn't matter. Like, I don't want to say age doesn't matter, but if you got a calling on your life, man, you better hit it. You better, you better get the chance. Like you better, like you know, like like get to it, like while you can. Cause, what's up, man? How you doing? Because like at the end of the like at the end of the day, like you have this calling. Like why 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 just why would you waste your calling? Like especially a good calling from God, on you know what I'm saying. So like, 
and, and there's a lot of good young musicians out there. A That's lot awesome. of good young musicians that, that are killing it at church. You know what I'm saying? They're chopping it up, you know, shredding it, all of that. So, like, I, I, I don't think it, it should matter if kids or, or the youth are behind, like, their instruments, especially on stage, like, you know what I'm saying? Because they got a calling, you know? They got a calling. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Elijah, this is Chris off. What, uh, great keyboard player. What's up, man? How you doing, brother? Uh, great human all around. We're gonna. Uh, he's gonna. He's bro. gonna drop some knowledge. I know. But before we get that, let's get it. Before we get that, Noah asked, "What if you are? What, what if you tithe at the church and you also play at that church? So do you? But it's pretty much you're paying for yourself. That's my own <laughs> position. But Chris off. Give us. Give us some scripture. Give us some knowledge. First. First things first. You got to check your heart. So you know. Amen. Yep. If you are. If you if you aren't willing to do it for free, then you shouldn't be paid to do it first and foremost. Then someone said, "Well, what the church doesn't have resources. It doesn't matter if they have the resources to pay you or not. They have to do something that is biblical, which I'll get to in a heartbeat in a second. So even if they can't afford to pay you a a, a salary or a wage, they need to feed you. They need to put gas in your car. They need to pay your cell phone bill. They need to do something for you to be to show gratitude and thankfulness that you're." giving of your time now there's quite a few bible verses first timothy 5 17 nehemiah 13 uh so nehemiah is probably the the biggest one um it says i also learned that the portions assigned to the levites had not been given to them and that all the levites and musicians responsible for the service had gone back to their own fields to work so i rebuked the officials and asked them why is the house of god neglected that i called them together and stationed them at their post so what happened was they weren't getting paid to play they were volunteer players, but they had to go make money to feed their families, take care of themselves. So they all went back to the fields to go work so they could provide for themselves. And what Nehemiah did is he rounded them all back, brought them back to the church, and he made sure that the tithes were allotted so that they got paid to be Levites and work in the temple. Now, uh, there's also Numbers 18, 21 to 32. I give all the, all the Levites all the tithes in Israel as their inheritance in return for the work they do while serving at the tent meeting. So that goes again to talk about how they need to pay you for serving because that is your your gift that you're offering and they need to return to you that work that you do. And then in Luke 10, 7, uh, Luke chapter 10, verse seven says, stay there eating and drinking whatever they give you for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. So you shouldn't be church hopping because that's a problem, right? If you're church hopping, that means you're not being fed spiritually. You're not being fed financially. Um, and so you should be at one place to get fed spiritually, but you also need to be taken care of financially. And because you do the work, you should get paid for the work that you do because it does take a lot of time, energy, effort, and talent to do that and to be skilled at it. Uh, and then Hebrews 10, it's Christ sacrificed once for all, but it goes down to verse 38, 39, somewhere on there. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. I don't know exactly where it's at, but and once again, just alludes back to being paid for being a Levite. And I know you talked earlier about, you know, it's not necessary for to have a worship without music. Yes, that's true. However, as musicians, another reason why we should get paid, it is we have one of the most important jobs because we till the soil and soften the heart so that the seed that the pastor gives falls on good ground. And once the, that seed falls on the ground, then it's the Holy Spirit's job to water that seed so it grows. And that's what then people give their life to Christ, um, so on and so forth. So whether you believe you should get paid or you should not get paid, biblically speaking, if you're going to provide your time and give up your time and energy to do work, you need to get paid for the work that you do. There you go, bro. <laughs> I appreciate you greatly. And I want to just like, uh, to like, clarify that because even like obviously i'm in position i obviously want to be in those in those places of storehouse right. right but the truth is like we don't need it but if the the pastor wants it then hey this is part of the biblical and or the practicality of it all too and i'm not right. saying that you don't need worship services i'm not saying all that what i'm saying is that you know we can worship wherever we don't need to be in a building to worship and, and i'm what I, by singing worship or joining together in the same kind of adorations, we don't need that technically inside a church building specifically, right? That's just like the like the the down into it. But 
in the actuality, if we're at a storehouse and they're paying, and they're wanting this and that, and they're needing you for your time. As an example, some, and I'm sure you've been there, some Christmas services, some Easter services, they have you for rehearsal, they have you for all day services. Imagine being like up to almost like spending 15 hours in one week and not being treated at all in any way, whether comp like financially and also, you are a wizard with the, not only the keys, but you can do MD stuff. You could also do Ableton. All these things are highly skilled, you know, traits that we need to uh, like uh, not only just harness, but know, especially in today's world. So to not even have that possibility of like, hey, we're gonna honor you in all the hours that you've put. Like God sees that. God knows that. That's why the compensation is there is because we are putting in the time of decades worth of effort. So like, and that's part of yeah. what it is, right? So like, yeah, I appreciate everything you just said. And then I just, I saw one of the comments, I can't scroll yeah. down, but I agree with Elijah because, you know, we help people get closer to God. That's cool and all. And once again, that goes back to my first point of checking your heart. If your heart isn't there, then you have no, no reason to be on the platform worshiping as a musician, no matter how good or how bad you are. Correct. But going back, biblically speaking, it is biblical to pay your musicians because of the time and the energy that they are providing and the skill set they're providing. If you're not that good and you're just volunteering, by all means, do it out of uh, the goodness of your heart. But if you are a skilled musician, especially if you do this for a living, biblically speaking, you need to get paid for it. Simple as that. Right. Right, I agree. And like I said, even if you're a beginner, that's why I keep going back to this. Like you said, food, gas, something small that goes a long way because of the fact that like, you're still spending your time. Even if you're not good, your heart's there, you're even, you're trying to strum along and you, you know, you're doing something, right? But again, like for, for people make that- a, Make a one-time investment, buy them some sticks or buy them their in-ears. You know, right. that's five bucks, a thousand bucks. You can just make that one-time investment in them and, and be good. That's doing something to help give them more to keep growing. It has to be something. You gotta either feed me, put gas in my car, or help me pay a bill, right? Absolutely, uh, I, I can't, oh no, I, I can't see where it's at, but one, uh, what's his, where is it? Uh, JR said, you know, you should also give up your time too, which I, again, you should get paid for sure, and he's a worship pastor as well. We should be getting paid for these things because again, it's a highly skilled, um, trait it's a profession right so these yeah. things should be taken care of and should be given as payment but also if you want to give up your time if you want to do those things absolutely that's not we're not saying that you only need to get payment it is right. biblical it is part of like what we do but at the same time it is quite all right to just go and say i'm going to serve at this place because they need it or they want or they whatever the situation is because you're again that's the heart the heart matter because i'm not here to say like i'm gonna try to try to get paid but i know that if i didn't do things you know if i didn't get a, a standard i wouldn't be able to live i wouldn't be able to do certain things that we are accustomed not even just accustomed to to survive how are, how are we going to pay for the gas to get there if you have zero if you have zero gallons in your gas tank how am i going to get there sure we should rely on god but we are right. relying on god that's that's the church giving back that's right another thing too um someone said what about worship leaders and singers um it, the Bible talks about preachers, teachers, and Levites. Levites are considered singers, also preachers and teachers, um, as well as singers. So if you are serving at some capacity, whether you're the preacher, a singer, a musician, um, a Sunday school teacher, they should all be compensated at one point in time with something because they're giving up of their time, their talent, and their treasure. Text. That's yeah. only, uh, Noel, not you. Everybody, every other tech, but you, Noel. Noel. Uh, I'll get it because he, he, you know him too. I'm gonna I'm gonna accept uh, two more people to come in and they can give us like if you need to go, I appreciate you. But if, if you want to stay in, I'll stay in for a little bit. If you um, and, and I wanted to add to that. Um, oh my! Actually, goodness, let's get man. these couple people in. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hey. How you guys doing? Uh, doing pretty good. How about you? Good. I think I'm doing well. Thank you. <laughs> tell, tell everybody who you are and why you are. Well, my I'll let him is, go first. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> now you can go. Uh, my name is um, Jesus, and uh, I play the piano at my local church. I uh, do a little bit of everything. I do uh, sound as well, and, um, and that's pretty much what I do. Perfect. Your connection's kind of wonky, but it's okay. We heard that you play church. You play keys at your church, tech. Great. Uh, you go. 
What's going on, man? I'm Jason. I I am on a worship team at my church, Word of Life, and here. And um, I agree with both y'all guys are saying, you know, with with being paid to do that. But me personally, the size of my church is a little bit smaller than what you guys have because I I checked you guys out and y'all <laughs> y'all got some big mega churches. You know, we're we're on a bit of a smaller scale. But I I will say this. At least the worship pastor should get paid. Well, you also get paid at the least something. Uh -huh. Gas money, whether it's food, whether it's bottles of water, it's something should be given for the time. Yeah. <laughs> because I, I look at it like this, and, and you made a good point that the worship team, because to be honest with you, I will visit a church every so often, and if the worship isn't there, then I can't roll with it. You know, and and let's say the worship isn't all that great, but the past is great. It's like it, it I need I need the worship just to stay there, just to keep me there for a while at least, and then I'll give the pastor a chance. But if the worship just straight up sucks, and I hate to say that, you know, I'm just being honest. But if the worship just straight up sucks, it's like man, like I can't, you know, because that is that that that's that's what drives me. <laughs> Here's what I learned the short time of man. Uh, it draws people, the word keeps the people. So, you know, it, a lot of people leave because the music's wh music whack, no matter how, uh, no matter how good the preacher is, if the music's whack, a lot of people aren't going to stay. It is what it is. So you got to, you know, for all purposes, you want to pay your musicians, you want to pay your tech, you want to pay your light director and all that. So the experience is good and they come and then the word was going to keep them there. So I'm going right. to add to that to both of you, and, and this is just like basic church business in terms of like what we are in now in our Western culture of whatever kind, right? And yes, uh, our, our boy Omar, there are many layers to this, and we love Omar. Anyways, but the point is, is that there's four pillars to a successful church, if you want to call it, or four main things that need to be going on. Like you just talked about the pastor and the word that's being spoken, right? Well, it doesn't matter if you're a Presbyterian. Uh, or non-denomination, doesn't matter. That is number one. Number two is the music, clear as day, right? Like we could all agree that, you know, and again, some people love that old traditional hymns. Some people love the new country. It doesn't matter what it is. That's just a pillar. Another pillar is the, is the, the community for obvious reasons, right? Like you are not a church without people there that you love and that you can grow from, like the, the small reach. And the, and the other one is the outreach, right? That's, again, that's the other pillar that we need to have in a specific church body. And I, and I say church body, like it's just basically like the church building or an entity of that church. So example, Free Chapel or Influence or wherever, wherever it is, that specific entity of that church needs to have those things to thrive and survive and to grow. Without, I, again, some churches just have one, which congratulations. And I'm not trying to say which churches are better because that's not, that's not irre irrelevant. It's more so, again, back to the heart matter. But those four things is what keep people at a church longer. So, uh, Jesus, what, what, do you, what do you have to say about all this? I, I just think that if you're a blessing to the church, you should be blessed as well. Yep. Some, I mean, it doesn't matter with what. I mean, it's just some sort of, um, like you guys are saying, you know, some gas money or whatever. I just, I just think you, you know, you can also bless the musicians. I mean, I, I don't think, um, I don't think there's something wrong with that. Something wrong with getting paid. I mean, there's so many. Uh, people that agree or disagree, uh, but like you guys were saying, we comes down to we're giving our time, you know, we're giving our you know the best that we can, and and I mean sometimes some churches don't even appreciate that, you know, they don't even say mm -hmm. oh thank you for your help, thank you for your time, and and I, I just think that's the right thing to do, you know, just just bless the musicians, just bless the people. I mean th that's what the church is about, bless you know, right. blessing, and and so it's crazy that. To be able to bless other people, but not to be able to, to bless the people that are actually blessing that people in some sort of or kind, you know, through music or through mm -hmm. um, worship or like um, some common um, was saying uh, the, the video production or, you know, you're blessing people, you know, there, there's so, there's some way that you're blessing someone. So I think you should be able to be blessed as well. 100. Very good. Uh, I agree. And I would like to add something to what you said, Chris about the amount of time 
you put into it a week. Yeah. Like you said, if you like like you said, like you have to learn the music before you go to rehearsal. Like you said, rehearsal is the performance. You know, re- rehearsal is the, the to get the little nitpick things out the way. And if you're putting forty plus hours in a week, <laughs> then that's that's a full time job. You know, so so therefore you should get paid, you know. And and to add to that, let's let's I I and I, I, we all have families to a degree, whether you have kids or no kids. Even if you consider your dog to be your baby, your fur baby, I don't care what it is, right? Our time is very valuable and limited. We obviously should be doing things for others. I'm not discrediting all that, but if we're already putting in time for actual, you know, other job, whether it's music or not, it's irrelevant. Now we're putting in extra additional whatever that is that we can eat. I would, and I'm going to say this is a kind of like uh, terrible to say, but like sometimes I would much rather stay home and practice or sleep in than go and serve or work at a church in some, in some cases or any other gig for like if it's 10 hours plus for that week. I can't find 10 hours for, for not even just myself, but to add to all these different things. So it's, it's not that it's like a disrespectful thing or not a humble thing. It's like, where is, we only have a limited amount of time per week, per month. Again, if someone wants to give their time to go and serve, absolutely. But again, it also goes back to, you know, we only have so much time and it's what we want to give back. And we obviously, like we just talked about, it, it definitely should be compensated to some degree because of the fact that, it's so hard to like live in this world period, let alone not get be getting compensated for our time that we even just invested into learning or get being prepared for that service. Uh, All right. I saw some of these comments. We got to get Omar on here because Omar always. Yeah. Has- Let me but- see. It. I'm going to see if we get five. I, we have to we have to take one person out. OK, well, I'm, I, I, yeah, I can I can go out. <laughs> Thank you. We well, appreciate you, bud. And uh, again, appreciate it. All of this is I'm going to I'm going to put this on my YouTube because not and no one's going to watch an hour plus video on Instagram. <laughs> I know I don't. So I'm going to post this on, on YouTube and watch it on fast forward mode. All this stuff is great. But yes, we're going to get Omar in here. And can you still use serve if you're getting paid? Oh, it's a service. Trust me, if you've worked with some of the musician, it's a service. So uh, let's get let's get Omar in here. Uh, thank you again, bud. I appreciate you. Pastor right, Brandon's thank comment. You. you have a good one. Uh, you too. All right, Brian. Pastor Brandon's comment said, what about other pastors? The Bible specifically talks about preachers, teachers, and Levites. So that's pretty much all that's going to matter. It, in terms of uh, certain skill sets when it comes. Oh, no, he's paused. What's up, Omar? What's up, guys? Christoph, you got cut off like I, he, like right at the when he was getting into like pastors and oh, he always has something good to say. <laughs> oh no! But everybody, this is Omar. Uh, tell everybody who you are, why you are. What's up? Hey guys, my name is Omar. Um, I've been What's in Omar? for about thirty years, and uh, I've been a worship pastor for about seven years, and um, gotten to serve on over under a lot of different great organizations and I've led many teams and built many worship teams and um, kind of been involved in all the creative process of uh, doing ministry so it's a, it's a great um it's a great experience it's not for the faint of heart and it's not uh, <laughs> it's not glamorous but uh, it's definitely very rewarding and uh, you know I've been able to experience both the the ugly the good and the ugly you know I've, I've kind of been on both sides so I, I I love this subject. I'm passionate about this subject. So Chris, I'm glad you brought this up, man. I, I just kind of want to jump in and share here and there. <laughs> I'm gonna pause you real quick. It's funny because I was just like I saw it somewhere else. Like I wanted to talk about this, and I didn't realize like it would you know a lot of people would be interested, which I'm grateful for. I was like, yeah. what the, the amount of people that are like it's even almost even right, like 55, 45 percent. I, I don't know what the numbers are now, but like. I was like, this is insane. Like, it's crazy. But uh, Omar's a great keyboard player, great human. He's pastored. He's done all the stuff. So he also, if anybody loves tacos, tacos y que, uh, I still have to go out and eat your food. But anyways, he's just a great human and great resource uh, to help us here. So let us know your input. I'm trying to get Christoph back in here. And it's not, a, it's like, it's not able to join. Anyways, go ahead. Um, well, I mean, I, I kind of jumped in midway of this conversation, so I'm not sure how far you guys are in it. But I, I do have something to say in terms of like the whole paid musician thing. That, that That's a very kind of layered thing because it, it, it really var- varies from organization to organization, even culturally. It's different. 
um, I came from an organization where it was like everybody on the team was hired, you know. So mm -hmm. then my my new church, I I, I was I was uh, offered to be uh, the worship director there, and I was like, oh, do I have a working budget to like hire? And they're like, no. <laughs> I was like, like you, you gotta work with volunteers. I'm like, oh, okay. So then you know that was a challenge for me, but I also learned some really valuable things and how to. Um, you know, really just building up a team that way as well. You're, you're, you're raising up in, in house musicians. And I think there's some really, there's drawbacks, but there's also really huge benefits from doing that, taking that route. Um, I, I'm going to try to sum it up to this, but like the way I said it in the comments earlier, that like it, it's the principle of reaping and of sowing and reaping, really. Um, you know how we preach, you know, you reap what you sow. That applies to church organizations as well. If a church values, a ministry building a ministry and, and 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 sowing into a ministry well they're going to sow into building that ministry now some churches they do it strategically where they might bring in like a, a real, really experienced music director or you know whatnot and then that person is in charge of building up the team and every so often bring in you know guest musicians whatnot and and, and you build from there and some churches they'll they, they bring in the whole you know a bunch of killers and they're just all in there the downside to that is that you 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 don't get the commitment you don't get the, the 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 being rooted in the church there's a lot of downsides to that too you know what i'm saying yep. so it, i think it's a really delicate balance and it comes down to the church so like okay what do you want like do you want high caliber high capacity musicians but it's a very likely thing that that's all you're going to get you're not going to get them you know beyond yeah. that Sure and uh, one thing that I've understood is as a musician myself, I've been, I've been, I've been compensated for a long time. I don't get paid. I don't get paid to play. I don't get blessed or whatever to play. I get compensated for my availability. That's the difference. My availability. So at a volunteer level, I can't expect so much from volunteers to be putting tracks together and to, you know, go all with these crazy arrangements and, like I'm doing no I'm getting paid to for my availability to make this possible to equip my team to do what they you know what they can do so you know a lot of musicians unfortunately I'm kind of going bouncing from one side to the other a lot of musicians it's just like they just play give me my check and I'm out that's not good too you know what I'm saying so it, it and then I heard somebody else say like oh like the church is here to bless you like the church no we're not actually the church does not exist for me to be blessed. My, the church exists for, for me to be a blessing. So, um, you know, that's just one of those hard things that like we just got to check our hearts too. You know, are we doing it to get paid? Or are we doing it because we love God? Getting paid is an honor. It's, it's a privilege. But, um, but there's comes some responsibilities behind that too, man. Like we can't just be doing it just to get paid. You know what I'm saying? I agree with you. And I'm going to, I'm going to just jump in right quick before I want these two to, to, to chime in. But uh, to me, like, I don't look at the church as a church gig in terms of like, oh, it's just something I go and do and oh, get yeah. a paycheck, right? Yeah. And to me, the responsibility, I mentioned it earlier, responsibility is huge. I, I got to be right. My heart's got to be in it for the right reasons. I got to be well prepared. I'm, I'm helping ushering people in to the presence, right? Like that's, that's, the drummer's responsibility. We've got to be on point. We've got to know, like, not only understand theologically what we're doing, but also in the moment, our skill set and all these different things. So our responsibility goes far beyond just how much is the gig pay. It's like, what, what, what's, the, what's the spiritual aspect of all these different things? And again, be compensated, of course, but there's a lot that goes into it. Yeah. And you know what? And like I said earlier, it, it really is every organization is different. Some churches might not care. They just be like, hey, we just need a musician. Come fill in. That's it. But you know what? I, I challenge you as a, as a professional musician, as, as, as a you know, minister in music, I challenge you to maybe one day ask the pastor, hey, pastor, what, do you, what, what does an amazing worship team look like to you? What does, what does like, an, like, like, what's your dream of having, right. like, what does that look like for you? I, I challenge you to ask that to a pastor, a senior pastor, a worship pastor, and hear them out, hear their heart out, and then put yourself in that situation to say, okay, now I'm in a position where I can contribute toward, towards building that, towards making that possible. And that is a greater calling to where you're now, you're, now you're in your gifting, not just on stage, but now you're doing it in a way that you're, you're multiplying. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what we're called to do. We're not called to just, we're called to multiply. And sometimes multiplying our gifts doesn't come through teaching others, but it just comes through helping others build something. You know what I'm saying? 
And we have that privilege and the ability. Most musicians are creatives. We, we think really differently and we have ideas. And those are questions we should ask. Um, again, it comes down to like, what kind of commitment, you know? Are you there just to get paid and bounce? Then mo you're most likely not gonna have that conversation. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Anyways. So I ain't gonna argue with you anymore because I always like your insight. However, <laughs> when it comes to stuff like this, you know how I am and I stick to the word on this. So when you, we, we, we are classified as Levites, right? So by definition, Levites are actually rooted and planted in the church. So technically we should not be having hired guns at church. It should be people who attend the church, they're a part of the church, they're a part of the family, they're a part of the body, and then they get compensated for the work that they do within the body. And going back to your point where you always gotta check your heart, if you can't do it for free because whatever reason, you got an ego problem, you got a power trip, you just trying to be a hired gun, then you shouldn't be doing it. But biblically speaking, uh, the church's job is to compensate us for the work that we do. And then in turn, as a Levite, our job is to be rooted and planted to always grow in all aspects of the church. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll use the scripture. Yeah, you're right. Levites had Levitical duties as well. Like they had duties beyond just being musicians. They literally tended to the church. They practically lived there. You know what I'm saying? So nowadays, a church probably can't pay for your housing, but they can definitely help towards other things. You know, change, times have changed and whatnot. So, you know, um, I, I totally agree with that. And I think it, just, it always comes down to like just the church organization. Like, you know, just I, I think more than anything, what God looks for is alignment. It's like as long as we can align ourselves with the vision of the house, with what the pastor is hoping for, if we can find a middle ground where say, OK, we're working together. I believe God blesses that. Um, right. You know, the Bible says, you know, submit your plans to the Lord so he can bless them. You know, everything you do, do it unto, man, unto God, not unto man. Like it's Bible's full of principles on how to go about being a professional musician in ministry <laughs> you know what i'm saying it sounds, like an, it sounds like an oxymoron but you know it's like yeah it, it's it's i'm very passionate about this subject because i tend to root for the for the guy who's like he's he's got his heart there and he's he's trying to do the best he can and he's struggling because he's not being you know let me i'll put myself there i i slaved myself in church serving for so many years and I, I i was so committed and so loyal and so faithful and like i practically lived at the church and that was my way of like i just love to serve and and and, and like 80 percent of the time i wasn't even compensated mm. it came to a point where i was so good at, at being faithful and, and being productive and impactful there at church but everywhere outside of my life i was falling apart my finances were bad i was irresponsible like i i, I was way off everywhere else and I had to learn some basic principles of like, I needed to have boundaries, healthy boundaries. And two, really understand that um, if I'm going to go beyond, you know, the expectation of, of a volunteer, then there should be a discussion there to say like, hey, I can, I, you know, would you consider bringing me on board or whatever, whatnot. Um, again, for me, my heart has always been like just being in line. You know what I'm saying? not being out of line and, and it, it's coming from a wrong place. Is that, it's that easy for your heart to just like be in the wrong place. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I always got to check your heart. Here's the other thing <laughs> is, um, yeah, I lost my thought. <laughs> well, you got, while you're you remembering gotta, it, who yeah, are you? Gotta, why are you go? Hey guys, I am Kristen. I'm actually a video director for a local church here in Michigan. Um, I can't speak on, musicians i love you guys it's part of the reason why i started uh video directing a couple years ago because i just love music and i love the passion behind musicians but um i just wanted to speak on a couple things here so when i started in production land I was very inexperienced and I just needed an out from the life that I was living. And um, God blessed me with an awesome video director that took me under his wing. And a lot of my tithing was spending time behind a camera. And I was shaking in my first probably six months because I had no idea what I was doing. I was not expecting any kind of pay. I just wanted to be there just to be there and just to be a part of the church. And I think a lot of 
what I'm seeing in the questions that are coming up is should beginners be paid? And I think along the lines of what you've been saying with, is it, uh, um, it's a matter of the heart. So I was getting paid and being there and just being in the presence of God and being able to correlate the presence of God to people on the live stream. Um, that was just an amazing blessing for me. It was, I was blessed to be a blessing. There are a lot of times where we would have baptisms and people would be watching the live streams and actually leave their homes in order to come be baptized. And that was payment for me. The amount of time that I spent in training behind the camera and everything that I was doing on the tech side and hearing those stories, that was enough for me. Um, now that I'm a video director a couple years in, I do want to be compensated. Um, I spend time recruiting. I spend time scheduling people. I spend time um, just learning my own craft. And I have a full-time job. I'm a single mom. I have a full-time job. And I would still do it for free. However, it's a blessing for me in order to get paid. So that was the input that I just wanted to put in. And I appreciate all the biblical references that have been said tonight. Um, there have been times that I've questioned, should I, be, should I be getting paid for something like this within a church? And hearing everything that's been said tonight has just been amazing where it's, um, I don't know, it's just been a confirmation that it's okay for me to be getting paid on the weekends. I just want to say I love you guys too. We, we, we always need a, a tech and video and all that stuff too, because part of, like you said, especially now, like this is another thing right now, because of the pandemic and everything, live stream is so crucial yeah. for not only getting the, the ministry out there, but also to help grow the kingdom in whatever capacity. So there's no reason that, obviously back in biblical times, you guys didn't exist. I'm just going to say that like, <laughs> obviously, but like the fact but is like, we it, you got to stay current. I'm sure if Paul, the Apostle Paul, was alive today, like Mr. Social Media Guru, like whatever, because that's the that's the way to get and bring in people. And again, like you said, you're you're a single mom. You have a regular job, so to speak, and this as a it's a job because learning tech, learning anything visual, learning all that stuff is a craft. It takes time, and like to say, like I shouldn't get compensated because I walked through church doors in order to do the thing which we're growing the kingdom for, which he is already in charge of giving back money, so to speak. Like it doesn't make any sense, especially when you're giving so much value and also learning so much to to give back. Yeah, absolutely. And um, like I said before, when you're just beginning, it, it really is a matter of the heart. Like, what are you what are you doing? Why are you beginning everything? Why are you starting in this? And if you're just starting just to get paid, there's a lot of secular jobs that you could be doing and getting, you know, minimum wage for it. But this is a great place. Even my children, they're 13 and 12 now. They are starting as camera kids. They are sometimes my primary source of my tech on our video team. And I'm not compensating them, but they're learning skills for the future. And we all start at minimum wage jobs. So if you're just starting out, maybe you shouldn't be expecting to get paid. But if you're spending as much time as you have, Chris, with your degree and everything that you've been doing in all three of you, um, you should absolutely be getting compensated for your time. Ooh. You guys want to add anything to, anything to a tech director here? No, it's, it, you definitely should get paid because I think in context, it didn't exist two, three thousand years ago, but it exists now. And you're still preaching and teaching through your gift of technology and worship through your technology. So it's definitely something that should be co compensated. And I don't, I personally don't think beginners should be compensated, but something needs to be given of them because I could be wrong, but I have to double check this. But as far as I understand, Levites are considered skilled workers. So people who do this as a profession or people who do this as um, someone who knows what to do and how to do it. So they're, they should be compensated because it is their skill. It is their job. It is their gift. Right. And then right. I also remember my point, you know, you got to check your heart because if your heart's not there, you're just 
uh, a roadrunner. One, you're, you're not out of order because the Bible specifically says don't jump from house to house. But secondly, um, if there's sin in the camp, remember, I think it was Caleb. God told Caleb, go through the camp and find the sin in the camp. Because if there's sin in the camp, that means it's going to mess up everything for everybody else. So the worship won't be as good. The church won't grow. You're going to have all of these little subsects of cliques and problems that are going to arise out of the church. So you can't just be someone who's there to hop from church to church and get a check because then your heart's not there. You have to actually be rooted in the church and be bonded to the church. That's my thought. Great. Love it. Omar, anything? Um, I think those are all great thoughts. Uh, I think culturally it, it, it varies from church to church, you know, from organization to organization. It, it's going to be a little different, but it all comes down to just always examining ourselves. And, and you know, I, I know you mentioned like, you know, if you if we should get paid like off the bat or if you want to work in ministry, like we should never say I want to, you know, I want to work. I want to be paid in ministry one day. Like, I probably would probably word that different <laughs> if I was, you know, starting off or whatnot, but more like, you know, I hope to be called in ministry or work in, you know, be in ministry one day where I can just do it where I don't have to work a regular job. Um, again, it's just like that chasing the money. Like it's always kind of been really like, ah, there's a lot of musicians that are just like that, you know, and I'm going to put myself in that, in that category too. I've been that guy too, you know? Um, <clears throat> Sorry, I'm driving. I'm like trying to pay attention. To <laughs> uh, Chris, we appreciate you. I'm gonna I'm gonna invite in an MD guitar player, but I appreciate your input because it matters. So we thank you. Thank you so much for letting me on. What a, what a privilege, to Chris. Take care, guys. Later, bro. What is Omar leaving too? Oh no! Don't oh. don't leave. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm, I'm inviting Mergs. You, uh, Omar, we played with Mergs uh, once. Oh yeah, yeah. And he's actually a, a MD. What up, Merg? He's Yo, what's up, Merg? out in Arizona, hey. plays guitar, all that fun stuff. I mean, we basically have a band here because uh, Christoph can play the bass. Hey, um, I know. <laughs> <laughs> this is the the new the new the new radicals right here. Um, anyways, what what are your thoughts on this, Mergs? I'm not sure what you've heard, but uh, but. First of all, Christoph has biblical references, so don't even try to come at him with those biblical. <laughs> The, this is just off the chain. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, I, I I feel like I came in like such a good time, but um, I just had someone argue with me. I wouldn't say argue, but they just wanted to debate with me on Instagram because I, I use language like book and like that because that's what you do. We book musicians, whether you're paid or not. I don't know what other word to use, you know. And so he was like, if you use language like that, then you're taking away the authenticity of worship, all this stuff. I'm like, get out of here with this religious hard stuff, man. <laughs> you know, but um, I can't remember who said it, but it's, yeah, we're, we're, we're like Levites and they were skilled players. And back in the day, they were considered as government workers that worked with David, you know, hanging out in David's tent. And I'm like, and, and plus, you get what you pay for. But at the same time, I've played with volunteers who to play circles around me. And I'm like, dude, you're, you're totally worth getting paid, you know? And just, we just live in a world and now, and I think it's always been like this, where if, like, someone's value is definitely shown by how much you get paid, you know? Like, what you guys are talking about, like, um, if you're going to start at a beginning wage, it's like you're worth this much because you don't know much, but your time is still worth something. But the more you know, the more you're skilled, then yeah, then you're going to get paid more and given more because of how much you're trusted as well. You know. Yeah, I like what, what you guys have to say. Uh, Christoph specifically, like, and actually Omar about road runners and like going from church to church. Like we all, we all have been in that situation where churches need us, fill in the blank. But like, really when you look at it it's like it's a highly sought after skill right like you need this in order for it to function especially in the music world to even like almost i think it's like a super audacious and don't ever use that program uh audacity but it's super audacious to even consider not giving compensation for people that have given their life to serve in some way like we it's a service to practice like obviously we all know practicing learning 
like anything Ableton, that's a discipline that the, the Bible talks about that we are stewarding our gift to whatever degree. And we all are part of this body, whether it's to serve uh, handing out a pamphlet or going and get the, the food, for the donuts like we all love. And so it doesn't matter what it is, like they're all like trained skills and definitely need to be compensated. And obviously like that's where we're all together. But really when you break it down, like it's, it's, it's so wild to not have that as like a, a way of giving back or a way of being a part of like even just the financial budget budget because tithing is supposed to go back to the people which are serving and it's like this you know sort of thing that just like is self-serving yeah totally um, and I can with the bible <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna, whenever, whenever we need someone that's just like, I'm going to just draw us back to the Bible. Like, all right, we get it. We get God, it in the Bible. Let's go. <laughs> I'm, that's the most, I'm like, you know, the barometer for everything. Like, we can have our opinions. Correct. But at the end of the day, we stand on the word because that's what we believe in. So that should be where we go to get our answers from, right? Right. Amen. It's funny. So I, I'm just going to throw this in and you guys can, <laughs> on YouTube, someone was like, you know, uh, the Levites were filled with the Holy Spirit, and that's why they were able to, like, spontaneously worship, and they were talking about the Old Testament. And I was like, all right, let's work on some theology real quick, <laughs> because <laughs> Holy Spirit was definitely not... Anyway, that's what you, you know you what I'm saying. No, man. <laughs> Hence the Ark and the Covenant. They had to, like, break their backs carrying it around. It's a duty. It was a responsibility. You know, it was, it was holy. Yeah. Right. Own, uh, I think people... People forget that. People forget that we're still carriers of the ark, in a sense. You know. That, yeah. Um, I, I want to add to that. Yeah. yeah. Go for it. No, what you were saying, like, you know, I, I read, I recently read to my team, like, a year ago, uh, when I was uh, over at my, my previous church, that, um, you know, when God, God actually picked out artisans to build the tabernacle, and, yeah. like, he inspired them to create everything that was in that inside the tabernacle. Right. So yeah. I see two things here. I see God's involved in the first place. God's in it. <laughs> God's speaking to somebody. God's chosen somebody, but I also see creativity involved. I mm -hmm. see the creativity being used and I see the skill being put to use. So yeah. when you mix those two things and you're, you're in right in the right place with God, God's going to use you. He's going to put you in the right place. But, again, in the Bible says he picked skilled artisans. So it's like God's not going to be, you know, he's very selective. And I think it's really yeah. cool that he would pick a creative to do yeah. his work. He can use anybody. I mean, we know how the Bible is. He can use anybody. Oh, totally. But I think yeah. in, cer in certain cases of, like, in, in matters of the creative worship and stuff like that, like, it, we are there is a special breed of people you know that that we have we're blessed with these gifts of music of being able to play the things that you can't express through your mouth you know what i'm saying right. and, yeah. and that's a beautiful thing when we can do that in a way that honors god that that brings people together that that inspires people to open their hearts we're creating an atmosphere you know what i'm saying and yeah and all all that together with the right heart of worship i mean it's beautiful man there's so much more mm -hmm there's so much behind this whole thing behind things it's just be seeing musicians on stage you know mm -hmm. but um anyways yeah. I, I i just when you said that about uh, the arc of the coming and this i like man that's really good because yeah <laughs> but, beautiful. yeah but to add yeah but to add what you were saying right it's like in in i think it's first kings chapters like three through like eight or whatever king solomon built the temple and it was like made of gold and and all this stuff, it was like the, just the best stuff that he could find, you know. And his prayer was for the reputation of their worship to be known, to, the reputation of their city to be known, you know. And it just made me think about, like, he used the most expensive stuff he could find. And a lot of people trip about spending a lot of money on gear and how, like, yes, you could get by on, like, a $500 guitar and like a few pedals here and there. You could get by with like, motifs are really cool still, but you could get by with a super old school motif, motif you know, <laughs> you know, but um, but you, you get what I'm saying, you know, but it's like, I think God cares about like 
about quality. I think God cares about the gear. I think oh. God cares if you have the funds that invest, you know, because it's at the end of the day, it's for the king of kings. You know, he is the Lord of Lords. He is the king of the universe. Why wouldn't you get the best things for the king of kings, you know? Yeah. I was going to say uh, to that, it's basically going back to being a steward of the, like, like whatever that parable was. <laughs> Obviously, it was me and stuff, but like, if you're going to bury 10 or you're not, not bury 10, but if you're going to reinvest 10, five, whatever, like that's the same kind of concept when it comes to music gear in itself because obviously it's very expensive. Not that like you have to have gear, like you said, in order to do the thing, but how are you ever going to expand and grow whether practicing or investing time in your actual equipment and all these different things? It's very huge. Um, and I was going to say, Chris, I mean, you, you answered in the, in the text However, we're going to always rely on you for Bible stuff now. Okay, so well, did the Levites uh, tithe? And yes. if, uh, if they did, why is that important for us to tithe? Well, it's, it's, it's already, we're called the tithe period, right? So the reference I gave earlier was Numbers 18, 21 through 32. And the verse that talks to that is verse 26, where it says, Speak to the Levites and say to them, When you receive from the Israelites the tithe I give you as your inheritance, you must present a tenth of that tithe as the Lord's offering. So, yes, still tithe, still got a top up ten, give back to the Lord. Very good. And, and I'm, I'm going to ask this because I said this earlier, but tithing for me, does it have to actually go to a specific storehouse or church building? Or can it be given to people since we are still ultimately the church? What is it biblically and or just thoughts on that? Uh, I don't know much about I don't have anything biblically about that, bro. So I'd have to look I'd have to research that one. Okay. Um, I off the top of my head, I believe that you still need to give your tenth to the storehouse um, because that's how they distribute it to take care of the house, right? So I think if you give your tithe to other people, that's like your offering, right? I got as far as I know, wrong. We got a couple pastors in here, so uh, uh, Pastor Tim could probably answer that question better than I can. But um, I, well, as, far as, I, as far as I know, you still need to pay your tithe to the house. Gotcha. Bro. Well, to we'll add to that, Go ahead. yeah, um, tithing is just it, like that. Ten percent is not yours. I think we just need to realize that money is not yours. So if you're spending that 10%, you're spending God's money. So every month we look at our finances and I'm like, all right, thank you, Lord, that I made this. And this is, this is yours. And what's cool is that tithing in general is still an act of worship. And whatever you give out to God, God is still going to breathe back onto you. <laughs> but I believe we're also called to be givers. And givers and tithing are two different things. You know, I think giving is the real act of worship because when we're choosing to sow into God's economy over our economy, then we're really sowing into something that is going to give us a bigger return than actually giving money to something else or whatever, you know? And I think giving is something that should be included into your, your day-to-day -day prayer life to ask like, Lord, what do you want me to do with this money? I just played this gig. I didn't need this gig. But I just got like this extra crash. Like, what, what do you want me to do? You know, of course, you want to buy more gear or whatever, or buy more plugins, whatever. But it's like, Lord, how do you want me to like sell this money? Right. You know? yeah. Yeah. Tithing to me is always, I've always had an understanding that tithing is not like, it's not like protect money, money you know? <laughs> it's like you give God your tithe. It's like, all right, I'm going to protect you now. Like, like it's like some mafia monster. <laughs> to, tithing to me has always been an act of, of, of showing trust. You're, 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 you're displaying your trust in God. You're saying, God, I'm going to trust you with my finances. This is yours. And, and that's the, it just helps us keep a healthy mindset, a healthy heart towards our finances and towards ultimately our trust in God. Because we don't want to come to a point where we just rely on our own, you know, on our own works and our, on our own finances. And I did all this, you know. So um, tithing definitely for us has been a, a really huge thing. Um, very good point. So there, this one question was pretty good. I'm sure you read that, uh, Christoph, but the over-commercialization of Christianity. So I'm going to speak about something real quick. I think that there, like, the actual walk of Christ, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, love your neighbor as yourself, 
that is the core principles that we should be following, living by the spirit, those kind of things. So no matter what, everything in life will be hijacked by something that's not, or trying to gain money or, or whatever you want to call for it. But again, it goes back to like we've been talking about, it's the matter of the heart. So if we know what we ought to do, again, love God with all our hearts, our mind and strength, figure out who we are at our, in, our, in our mental area, because this is a big battlefield in there, uh, our emotions, how to be able to have self-control, live out the fruits of the spirit, all those things, it cannot be overtaken by anything because we're living the authentic way of Christ. And so anything beyond that, we cannot control. But what we can do is offer up the, our, our, again, how we live in that biblical principle. And again, if it gets hijacked by other things or you know, people trying to use it for money or whatever that is, all we can do is try to, again, love them like we ought to be loved and hope and guide them back to where the truth is. Cause all, in time, some wise woman said this pastor, uh, Bianca in, in time truth and, and with God truth will come out. And like, this is the kind of thing where if you're giving someone truth over and over, over again and loving them the way they ought to be, it's only a matter of time where that is not going to be affected by exterior motives. Right. I agree Anybody with that else? point. I mean, I'll touch on it. I think people consider over commercialization like uh, the fog lights and the, I mean, the fog, the lights, the LED screens, all that stuff, right? And I think that stuff is necessary for a few reasons because the world has all of that, but God, the creator, gave us the creativity, the knowledge, the know-how for all that. So why should the Preach world it, have man. that? The church doesn't have all that and more. So I think if the church is still preaching and teaching truth and nothing but that and te teaching the word, then you can't really get over commercialized as long as you're doing the, the, the work that you're supposed to be doing. I think it, the, the problem becomes when churches have all the cool <laughs> stuff that the world has, but then they stop preaching. Truth. They're trying to get more money or trying to keep, <clears throat> keep butts in the seat as opposed to preaching the truth, setting a few people so that people can actually grow. Right. Right. And actually, I want to, I want you, you both to kind of chime in on this too, because I, especially like on TikTok or on here on Instagram, uh, posts are like, this is not a church. How dare you guys think this is worship? Like, oh, it's just, is this a concert or church? All, all the things. And like, a lot of times my response is, like, obviously you have to be like patient with these people. But the, 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 the idea though is like, if, if we have artists that are self-serving in some way, again, we don't know their, their actual personal life, whatever kind, but if they're self-serving and they're able to do that for whatever the reasoning is, why, at, like we've like, Merckx has mentioned before, we're doing it for the King of Kings. We're, we're, we're playing at an excellent level. It's so hard if you've ever done this kind of performance like you guys have to like not do the same efforts, if not more some, because we're doing it for the King of Kings, right? Like it is like a passion to do it. It's our love for it. And we are able to do it because we have that skill set to do it. So why wouldn't we do the same, if not more to just, again, whether experience or giving back in a way that is equivalent, if not more so than what other people are doing, because it's not about an ego thing or trying to get, like you said, butts in the seats or whatever. It's literally like, this is how we function. This is like, we're playing or doing things at an excellent level and we ought to be, we should be the trendsetters, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, I had, yeah. I just want to hit this comment real quick before I lose it. Yeah, yeah go for it. Instead of the Bible, like I think books are good so that people can see other perspectives, but it should never be a replacement for you reading your Bible. So it, it is a problem if people are trying to push their books, their merch, whatever else they got, their CDs and all that nonsense over you actually just reading the Bible and getting from being fed from the Bible. Yeah, that's good. There's a book, there's a book out there that I do recommend though, that are every musician and, and worship singer leadership. What is it? I'll buy it right now. The Reset by Jeremy Ritz. <laughs> The Jeremy Riddle book, oh, The Reset. Yeah. I haven't That's, read that one. I've heard about it. And I will actually it's put really that good down book. too. You're going to be right, like, but, you're gonna read yeah. it. You're going to be like, ah, yeah, that's not me. And they're going to be a second chapter. Yeah, that's not me. And then you're going to hit a chapter. You're like, oh, snap, that's me. <laughs> that's, that's, it's that kind of book. <laughs> that's awesome. To piggyback, Chris, what you were talking about. Um, so you, 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 all you guys know Tim Manigault, mighty, mighty man of God, Tim Manigault. Um, he explained this to me and like why all these like lights and expensive stuff matters and 
he was like, if one day you get a, you get a call and the president, regardless where you stand politically, if the president was like, hey, I'm going to come over, I'm going to have dinner. I want to have dinner with you. I'm like, oh, snap. You know, then if someone of that high authority is going to come over, you know, then I'm going to make sure I bring up the fine china. I get the catering crew. I'm going to get new clothes. I'm going to get all this stuff, you know, because he's a, a person of high authority. So who, and God being God, how much more should we do for him if we're right. going to do that kind of stuff for the president, you know? So is that, and then um, um, my pastor over at the church I work at, um, Pastor Ryan Visconti, he explained this to us in a meeting one time. He, he pointed out that, you know, that there are three different types of like genres of churches that are like the word of God that's very, very um, present and like focus on the word, which is more Calvary Chapel-ish style. And then there's a secret friendly, you know, that's very elevation style. And then there's um, experience, experience only, which is very Bethel style, you know? So you have like word of faith, um, super friendly and, and Pentecostal kind of styles. And it's important to have churches that have a blend of all of those, you know? It's kind of like if you, if you dish out the truth, you got to back it up with some grace. And if you have some grace, you got to back it up with some truth, you know? Because one of those things aren't like really that great to have just one of those, you know? And so I think when it comes to like those three different genres of churches, we could kind of get lost in, in like kind of the point of what we're doing. You know, if you're all about the word, it's like, oh, well, the Bible says this, Bible says this. Well, yes, that's true. That's good. But if you don't have the spirit to back it up, then it is going to be like pulling teeth, leading people to Jesus, right. even through worship. Then right. worship is going to feel stale if you don't have the right spirit. Even if you don't have that seeker friendly kind of thing, then you're not going to get people in the door to experience it. You know? Like I've played at a lot of Pentecostal churches where like the Holy Spirit and the fire of God is there. But there are like five people in the room. <laughs> and some, yeah, and, and sometimes, yeah, and sometimes they'll prophesy a word. I was like, oh, that's a good word. Is that biblical? <laughs> like, was that even biblical? You know, it's like, is there a translator in the house? You know, it's like, what the heck? You know. So I just think even in worship, it's a, it's important to have a good mix of those three of being solid in the Word, having a solid relationship with the Holy Spirit, but also having like a mindset of evangelism, so you could get people in the doors or get people to your worship event or whatever. You know. Couldn't agree more. Got to get charger. That's good, Mercs. Uh -huh. so I, I think it was Christian talked about, I, I guess his part of over-commercializing, he was trying to explain through text, is I guess these worship leaders <coughs> become celebrity, I believe. They become like internet celebrities. And uh, so my response to that would be, I don't see nothing wrong with it to an extent, right? It goes back to what we talked about earlier. Where's your heart? Are you using your platform? to get more people to church and give their lives to Christ and help them grow and change? Or are you doing it for your self gain or your ego? And so I have a problem with the worship leaders and even pastors who are seemingly about the ego as opposed to about the work. Right? So I think you should have a big platform because if you look at when Jesus was around, like when he came to town, he tore up towns. He had thousands of people come to see him. Jesus was a rock star. Like, no doubt. He was a rock star. Right. But then we look at his heart, right? His heart was about changing people's lives, not about how many people came to see me, how many people could I touch, how many lives, you know, all that stuff. It's, it was, his heart was based in how can I give glory to my father, right? Um, so good. that's my response to you, Christian. I hope I answered that correctly. You guys want to hit that? that? Again, that's so good because, again, it goes back to, like, we have – like, Paul even said you become all things, you know, so that you be – like – are able to help change their lives in some way, right? Like, and, and we went to even saying Jesus, when he went to each town, he was like, I'm going to tear it up. Or even just like, they knew he was coming from like, and like, that's, he was like a political figure, so to speak, because everyone was like, oh, who's this? Who, they're going to take over us. Like, it was, they, they, were, they were crazy, obviously. But like, the point is, is like, if, if Jesus was here right now, he would be at the tough spaces. I'm not even going to go into that. But like, he would be with the people, the people that are hurting the most or need it the most, 
And you know what I'm talking about? Like wherever that is, he's there, right? He had like, that's where he would be. And crowds would go to him because why? Authentic, genuine love for them, for the change, like you just said. And again, if it had to be like through social media, he would have absolutely used those social media because why? The time back then, it was through word of mouth. It was through I'm going to where they are, and I'm going to be hands on. He would do the he would do the li the IG live here, and then go to wherever you needed to be to be with the people all the time. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, one of one of the cool. Yeah, uh, yeah, I could I can talk about that forever but um, <laughs> you said yeah um i was gonna say you mentioned about like the reason why people wanted to go to jesus um because yeah he showed genuine love and i think as musicians we we need to remember that even though we're going in as professionals we're going in knowing they're getting paid and everything um i think it's important to remember that like the musicians that we just meet or the musicians that we're playing with again it's like we still have to minister to them in a way, either if it's either through your playing but or through just conversations in the green room or in between sound checks or whatever, you know, because at the end of the day, I think as Christians, um, everyone needs to experience a touch of heaven whenever you're in the room. We're called to be atmosphere shifters, atmosphere changers, you know. And yeah, the, the, those two things. Experience heaven whenever someone's talking to you and feel genuine love when, you, when they're around you. You know, um, one of the biggest compliments I got playing guitar, it was from Rick Pino. I, I played guitar for him a couple of times and it was at Soundcheck and I was playing and then he was like, ooh, playing is oily. And I was like, is that good? That's of heaven, Bergs. You got the oil. yeah, dude. I was like, I was like, yeah, dude. <laughs> I was like, I made it. Okay, that's cool. Spin me round and round. I'll spin my sock. Let's do it. You know, <laughs> amazing. So, yeah, I, I have some uh, common, uh, some practical um, tips for for to, to you can practice. Anybody can practice, and this is something I learned from my pastor. He would ask. Why, why do you surf? Why do you like to, you know, why do you like to be a musician? Or why do you like to serve in church? And, you know, I would come up with the most, like, try to come up with, like, some spiritual answer. I'd be like, you know, because I want to, like, you know, impact and I want to use my gift and blah, 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 and this and that. And he would be like, you know, that's really great. But it should just, at the end of the day, it should just come because you just love God. That's it. You love mm. God. And that really gave me a lot of perspective that to where I, I use that as a filter when I was interviewing people to come in the worship team. And I would ask them, why do you want to serve? It, 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 this is one thing that I learned at my previous job was that before anything, before music director, before worship director, before staff, I'm a servant, regardless if I'm on Amen. staff or anything, I'm a servant. And when we have that mentality and heart of a servant, we, it helps put things into perspective. Um, we serve out of a place of gratitude as, as opposed to a place of entitlement. And, um, mm. you know, that took me, it took me some time to, to, to figure that out and to learn that. So, um, but, you know, it definitely helped me a lot. It, it humbled me in a lot of ways. And, and, and it, 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 I was able um, to, uh, God kind of uh, exposed a lot of things in me that I thought I was, I thought I was good, you know, in that sense. But in, it exposed a lot of things that I was like, oh, shoot, I'm doing this for the wrong reason. So, you know, that's some practical advice for any aspiring musicians, any people that, that really want to kind of get deeper into it. Ask yourself those two questions. It's like, why do I want to serve? You serve because you love God. Um, because at the end of the day, what if you didn't get paid? Or what, what if, what if, just add a what if in there. Is the what if going to be greater than your love for God? You know what I'm saying? Is your love for God conditional? So that's something that we need to constantly ask ourselves. And then the other one is just simply like serve, be, be, do it, be there because you're a servant. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Yeah, I, 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 I think learned, I got bro. slain in the spirit for a moment. I don't know what's happening. But, uh, <laughs> Chris, Chris, <laughs> Chris off, any, anything you got to add to that? If you want me, I, I always got something to say, bro. <laughs> I, I, I love what you got to uh, say. 
but I'll, I'll take what Omar said a little further. So um, one thing I always work on, I consult with a few churches and companies regarding their social media, right? And so what I always do is an exercise I learned a long time ago doing a contract was always ask the question why. Mm. And it's one of the most difficult questions to answer. So if you ask the question why you want to serve, you Omar would say something like, oh, I, you know, I want to see souls saved. I want to do all this. So, okay, why? And then you have another answer. Okay, why? And if you ask that and you can come up with the answer 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 times and you get it boiled down to the basic simplicity of whatever it is, I love God, I enjoy it. That is kind of your, your mission on why you do it. And if you can't come down to that, then you need to kind of figure that why out first before you try to get paid before you try to go to some church or try before you try to get on staff you need to have a purpose behind why you do whatever it is you do before you try to do it and that goes back to your right, mama Checking your but i want to add to what you're saying because i i've had many people say like hey how how can i gain a following on instagram or like what should i do blah blah blah, blah. like i, I want to grow my following and like the first thing i like you said is the why do you want a following right like, what are you going to give to them that I, again everyone should have a following to whatever degree but what are you going what are you pouring into them what, what are, you are you giving to them and why do you want to do this right yeah and it's it, it the the answers usually come back well you know because whatever but like really at the end of the day are you are you ministering or feeding into them to whatever degree right. You know, again, whether it's a personal brand, a business brand, it doesn't matter. You know, and social media obviously is very important. But at the end of the day, if you're not doing it out of a heart for like, now you said gratitude over here, love of God. Like I, I, I'm going to like really brief story. Like I realized that I wasn't stewarding my gift or my, the thing that I was given, I was not stewarding it in the way that I ought to. And I realized my grandpa came over here from Cuba, was like, you know, escaping communism and and I'm not over here like just like, oh, I'm living an entitled life instead of realizing, wow, every moment I could easily be back in Cuba. I could right. easily be in communism. I was one decision away from living there and not having every single opportunity to steward in a whatever kind of capacity. And again, your world is whether you're in a small community or a big community, it doesn't matter what it is. But what are you doing to give back to, again, be a steward of what you got? And that's right. really what the why should be is like, I love God. And I want to make sure that, you know, what I needed in that time, I, I'm giving back in some kind of way. Right. That's right. But it, what else you got? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's actually crazy. I was like, I was telling, before you, before you say anything, Omar, I was like, oh, this is like, gonna be like a, a 30 minutes an hour talk. No problem. And then all, all of, all of like the best people that I, I just want to like hang out and go to dinner with, like I'll get on. I'm like, well, I got time. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I got to start cooking soon. <laughs> we're ordering in tonight. Omar, yeah. sorry, what were we going to say, Omar? No, um, I was just saying, like the Bible says, you know, who much is given, much is required. And I believe that uh, as creatives, we, we, we possess a, a great gift. We, we have a lot of um, qualities about us that really put us in a position to be, may, to be able to make a big impact. And again, I don't, I'm not saying that God only uses people with a lot of qualities or whatever, because that's actually opposite of what God does. He uses a right. belief. Um, but at the same time, it is something that he gives us. And I, I feel a strong yeah. responsibility to say, well, if I have this much, then what am I doing with it? Um, and like, it may not always mean being on stage. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it could be in the form of insight that I've just learned and, and talking to people in the background, you know, in, in the places where I'm not being seen, you know what I'm saying? And, and I think if we learn to be sensitive and, and, and be very self-aware about the things that we're learning and experiencing and finding how God is talking to us through those experiences, through those, you know, situations and through encounters, um, he could use us off the stage to build other people up and to, to bring insight and to, to, to um, encourage others because, you know, I'm 42 now and there's a lot of things that I'm like, I wish I would have known when I was like, you know, in my twenties, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But now I get the privilege of being able to talk to a few young guys 
who are in their 20s and they're asking me questions i'm like oh bro you're gonna love this answer you know what i'm saying you're like i can tell you ten thousand yeah. ways how not to do something you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah. so, so, uh, you know, i was gonna say you, you don't look 42 by the way that's that's a lie i think you're like 30 <laughs> some like no, no, no. yeah i think what? i have more gray hairs than you bro <laughs> Yes, all that to say that man is just steward your gifts man steward your gifts and 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 ask god like how 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 can i how can i be the best i can for you on and off the stage can agree more yeah. yeah i think to add to that um there's some young guys that i'm seeing that are killer players you know in church and outside of the church and and stuff and they're super passionate about ministry and everything and i think it's important to recognize the difference between talent and anointing because i've seen talent abused but i've also seen anointing abused and how you can still live a sinful life and play with anointing you know how it's just everything just has to come back to relationship with the lord that's really what it's about you know um because i like i'm talking to you guys now and I'm, I've been super honored to, to play with all you guys at one point because I've, it helped me recognize that, like, well, I'm a part of contributing to the sound, to the new sound of heaven in my generation, you know? And that's something that needs to be really uh, taken care of with a lot of, um, I, forget, I, I can't think of the word. It's just a sacred thing, you know? that needs to be cherished, that needs to be taken care of, you know. It, it's much more than passing the baton to like the younger generation kind of thing. But we're, like this, the sounds that we're creating from heaven, that's what every, all the other younger people are experiencing now. You know, I'm like, I wanna do that. Whatever you just made me feel in that playing, I, I wanna do that, you know. I, so I think that's where like our musician hats also need to be passed wearing hats at the same time you know amen that's good bro oh. so um, before actually, we go going, just gonna, to wrap yeah. it up should musicians get paid in church omar yes or no if the musician yes, no. <laughs> is, skilled, is skilled and 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 up, can uphold the expectation and you know the the, the expectation that the organization is wanting yes mergs yeah, totally. And if put your money where your mouth is, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Christoph, you, you, I know you have, but you last last words. But I say yes, but I'm with Omar. You got to be you got to be skilled. Simple as that. So, yes, bro. Yeah, it, like I said, down to the prince reaping and uh, sowing and reaping, man. People, you know, the church mm -hmm. preaches to the church, but it also applies to church organizations. Right, you throw right. into something, you're going to say, hey, this church is going to, we're going to sow into this ministry to build it up. Okay, we're going to strategically bring in a skilled music director to, to lead the team because as, uh, naturally a good music director is going to elevate the whole team. It's I've right. seen it happen time and time again. So, you know, that th there's a lot of opportunities. You know, you, you inspire the musicians on the team. You create... You create a space where you can now people can ask questions. Hey, how did you do that? Or how do you do that? You know what I'm saying? There's there's a lot of opportunity from there if if the church that is you know investing or sowing into the ministry, there's a lot of potential that can come from that. So right. that's those yeah. are my thoughts. But I'm there has to be that plan. has to be an expectation. <laughs> right. Absolutely. And last thing with yeah. that with that said. If you do have someone who's skilled, they can bring up all the unskilled people to make them skilled. So whether they're there or not, the church can run at a at a high level with or without that one person because they've done what they're supposed to do and raise up other people behind them, like Omar said earlier, to multiply. So you gotta you can't just be the the guy who is the knight in shining armor. If I'm not here, it all falls apart. You gotta raise people. You gotta raise people to take over, bro. That's yep. the best. That is the best, that is the most rewarding thing for me as a music director, that if I can be at church one Sunday and it's like fire, we're, we're, do, we're all locked in and then I'm gone the next week, but the team still holds it down, bro, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah. how. You got, you got to multiply yourself. And if you're not multiplying yourself, then you're going to get burnt out and you're just going to show, you're, you're not going to really produce fruit as a leader if you're not multiplying yourself. 
Right. Right. Because let's face it, we can't be there all the time. We also can't do all the things. We can't do all the churches either. Like that's insane to think about. However, we can build up other people to make sure right. that they're the ones doing it for, again, the why, which is obviously for God. Yeah. But like the, the, the biggest, the, the, like the biggest like compliment I can get, not even about my own play, but it's seeing other people thriving and saying, I had anything to do with that, helping them get to where they're at, right? Like, it's just something very small or big. It doesn't matter whether you sh I showed them a paradiddle or not. It's irrelevant. The point is, like, I was a part of their process getting to where they wanted to be, to be able to lead without me even having to do anything. That's an honor, blessing, and again, a huge compliment. That's right. Uh, the last one, someone said, uh, Brendan said, Hi, I, don't want, I don't want to open another can of worms, but there's one thing that I can teach you how to play keys, but I can't teach you passion. Absolutely. So, can't learn. <laughs> yeah. That's another conversation. That's good. <laughs> That's good. We're, we're, next, we're going to have to do another live and spend That's three hours. Tough. I mean, it's going to be insane. The one that uh, Brendan was saying about how like, he needed this convo, convo because they're literally looking for to hire a full-time MD. If any of you guys need you know, a full-time MD job, I'm just kidding. But like, the point is, like, obviously, going, going to and being a part of a church, like, it, it's, it, whether it's a, ran as a business or, or it's actually spirit-led, it it's, it's irrelevant. These, these occupations need to be taken care of because, again, biblically it is there. And also, you cannot elevate you cannot, not the not elevation, but you can't elevate your current culture or community or family without having people that are the skill that can, like you said, bring them up. There's no right. way you could, you're, if your standard is, I won't say mediocre, but if you're at a beginner status, there is no way that you're going to elevate if no one's trying to support an iron, sharpened iron. But when you right. have someone that's been on big stages or has invested 50 years of their time, or it's like Jordan Sarmo, which is like a was a producer for Influence and like played at uh, IHOP forever. Like you, you won't elevate yourself if you don't have that in your circle. And again, like there's that old saying, like oh, you never be the smartest person in the room or in that circle. But that's a good thing because you could always grow it, and that's the whole point of the body is to grow each other up. Very good. Right. <clears throat> Not to end on my bro. Love you all, and it's like we. It's unfortunate that we can't like just hang out and do this in person because uh, we're all like scattered somewhere, and we also have like busy schedules. Or we could all just go to Tacos Ike and just hang out for a minute. Tacos on me. This it's worth it. It's worth it. When, <laughs> when is it, when is the next one? We're we're up in this Friday and Saturday in the Whittier. Hold up, we're door opening. Whittier. That's what I want. Friday and Saturday in Whittier. Is what? When's the store front actually open? Oh, our store. oh man, we're shooting for God willing around mid June. Yeah. Oh, cool. I'll definitely be there for that. Hey, yeah. Worship night at his taco shop. We're gonna have a worship night. Uh, hey. Jordan Samos, <laughs> we gotta get paid, and Jordan Samos is correct. <laughs> but I'll send tacos. Uh, we gotta get some tacos. We gotta hang. Uh, uh, I appreciate you guys for joining. Uh, I didn't expect it to go this long. I appreciate. Each one of your insights. Right, I got remember I'll post this on like YouTube, maybe on Instagram. I don't care. Uh, people need to know. So I appreciate you guys. Love you all. So thank you again. Take care. Good night, guys. Good night. Bye bye.